Where do Serbs really come from? For centuries, this has been one of the Balkans' biggest mysteries. Some say Serbs are direct descendants of the Slavic tribes who moved south in the early Middle Ages. Others believe their roots go much deeper, back to the ancient peoples who lived in the Balkans long before Slavs arrived. Now, for the first time, DNA is giving us real answers. And what scientists have discovered is surprising. So stay with me until the end, because we are about to explore the hidden truths of Serbian DNA. And before we dive in, let me ask you a question. Do you think Serbian origins are mostly Slavic or mostly ancient Balkan? Drop your answer in the comments. Before we talk about Slavs, kingdoms, or modern nations, we need to step back much further in time. Long before the word Serb existed, long before medieval borders or written chronicles, the Balkans were already full of people. These people farmed the land, raised animals, traded with neighbors, and buried their dead in ways that archaeologists can still trace today. This deep layer is where the story of Serbian DNA truly begins. For thousands of years, the Balkan Peninsula was not empty land waiting for newcomers. It was one of the most densely settled regions of prehistoric Europe. Ancient groups lived here continuously, from the Stone Age, through the Bronze Age, and into classical antiquity. Among the most well-known of these groups were the Illyrians, Thracians, and Dacians. These names come from later Greek and Roman writers, but they represent real populations who lived across the Western and Central Balkans. They were not a single people, and they did not all speak the same language. Some lived in coastal regions, others in mountains and river valleys. Some built fortified settlements, while others lived in smaller farming communities. What matters most is not their names, but their continuity. Archaeology shows that many settlements in the Balkans were occupied again and again over long periods of time. Villages moved slightly, changed shape, or adopted new tools, but the people themselves did not simply disappear. When new influences arrived, they mixed with what was already there. This is important because it challenges an old idea that history is made only by replacement. In reality, history is often made by layering. New cultures arrive, but older populations remain beneath them, adapting and absorbing change. Genetic studies support this picture. Ancient DNA taken from prehistoric Balkan remains shows clear links to modern populations in the region, including Serbs. This does not mean that modern Serbs are the same as ancient Illyrians or Thracians. It means that parts of that ancient population survived and became part of the genetic foundation of later groups. The arrival of Slavic-speaking groups in the Balkans during the 6th and 7th centuries is one of the most important chapters in Serbian history. It is also one of the most misunderstood. For a long time, the popular story was simple. Slavs arrived, replaced the local population, and created new nations. This idea fit well with older nationalist histories, but it does not match what archaeology or genetics shows today. The Slavic migrations were real. Groups from regions north of the Danube moved south into the Balkans during a period of political instability, especially as the Eastern Roman Empire struggled to control its borders. These groups brought a new language, new customs, and new social structures. However, migration does not automatically mean replacement. Most historians and geneticists now agree that the Slavs did not arrive as a massive, unified population that wiped out everyone before them. Instead, they arrived in waves, often as smaller groups, settling among existing communities. Over time, Slavic language spread widely. Language spreads faster than genes. A local population can adopt a new language within a few generations, especially if it brings social or economic advantages. This process has happened many times in history and does not require large-scale population replacement. Genetically, modern Serbs clearly show Slavic ancestry. This is an important part of their DNA. But it is not the only part. Slavic ancestry blended with older Balkan ancestry rather than replacing it. The result was a mixed population that spoke a Slavic language but carried deeper genetic roots. This blending explains why South Slavs, including Serbs, are genetically closer to other Balkan populations 
than to Eastern Slavs from farther north. The language points one way, while the deeper genetic layers point another. Before the Slavs arrived, the Balkans had already spent centuries under Roman rule. This period left a strong cultural and administrative mark on the region, but its genetic impact is often misunderstood. In the Balkans, Roman provinces were built on top of existing communities. Roads, cities, and forts were constructed, but the rural population remained largely local. Many Balkan men served in the Roman army, some rose to high positions, and several Roman emperors were born in Balkan provinces. This shows how deeply integrated the region was into the empire. Yet Roman rule did not involve large-scale settlement of Italians replacing locals. Instead, Roman influence worked through administration, law, and infrastructure. Latin and Greek became important languages of power, but everyday life in villages continued much as before. When the Western Roman Empire collapsed and the Eastern Roman, or Byzantine, Empire continued, the same pattern remained. Political control changed, but the population stayed. Genetic studies reflect this reality. While there are traces of Mediterranean and Southern European ancestry in the Balkans, they are relatively modest. They represent contact and mixing, not replacement. The Roman layer added to the genetic landscape, but it did not erase earlier foundations. When scientists analyze modern Serbian DNA, they look at patterns across the entire genome and compare them with both ancient samples and modern populations. What they find is not a simple answer, but a clear one. Serbs cluster closely with other South Slavic populations, which confirms shared history and migration. At the same time, they also show strong genetic continuity with ancient Balkan populations. This combination is one of the most consistent findings across multiple studies. In simple terms, Serbian DNA reflects three main layers. The first is a deep Balkan layer that goes back thousands of years, long before written history. The second is a Slavic layer that arrived during the early medieval period and became culturally dominant. The third includes smaller influences from Roman, Byzantine, and later historical contacts. What makes this surprising to many people is not the presence of Slavic ancestry, but the strength of the older layers. Despite invasions, empires, and centuries of political change, the core population of the region remained remarkably stable. This does not make Serbian DNA unique in Europe, but it does place it among populations that show strong continuity rather than repeated replacement. Similar patterns are seen in other mountainous or geographically complex regions. Another important point is that DNA does not support extreme claims from any side. It does not show that Serbs are purely Slavic, nor does it show that they are unchanged descendants of a single ancient group. The truth sits in between. It is a story of mixing, adaptation, and survival. As DNA research becomes more visible to the public, it has also become part of larger debates about identity in the Balkans. This is especially true in regions where history is deeply tied to questions of belonging, borders, and cultural memory. Serbia is no exception. While genetics can help us understand population history, it is often misunderstood or misused when it enters public discussion. One of the most common misunderstandings is the idea that DNA can decide who belongs to a nation or who has a stronger claim to history. In the Balkans, this way of thinking has fueled arguments between neighboring peoples, including Serbs, Croats, Bosniaks, and Albanians. Each group has its own historical narratives and DNA findings are sometimes pulled into these stories in selective ways. For Serbs, modern genetic studies show strong overlap with neighboring South Slavic populations, along with deeper Balkan roots that are shared across the region. This does not weaken Serbian identity. It explains it. Identity is built from language, culture, religion, and shared history, not from isolated genetic markers. Another important point is that ancient DNA does not belong to modern nations. The people who lived in the Balkans thousands of years ago had no concept of today's borders or ethnic labels. Trying to claim them exclusively creates more confusion than clarity. Genetics works best when it is used to understand connections, not to draw lines. 
Geography plays a major role in why Serbian DNA shows such strong continuity over time. The Balkans are not a flat, open landscape. They are shaped by mountains, rivers, valleys, and natural barriers that have influenced how people moved and settled for thousands of years. Much of the Serbian landscape consists of hilly and mountainous terrain. These environments tend to support smaller, stable communities rather than large-scale population. Villages often remained in the same areas for generations, with limited movement in and out. This kind of settlement pattern helps preserve genetic continuity over long periods. When migrations did occur, they were often absorbed into existing communities rather than replacing them. Newcomers married into local populations, adopted local practices, and became part of the social fabric. Over time, this creates blending rather than disruption. This geographic factor helps explain why the Balkans, including Serbia, do not show the same level of population replacement seen in some other parts of Europe. It also explains why ancient genetic layers remain visible in modern DNA, despite centuries of political change. In the modern era, large numbers of Serbs live outside Serbia. Migration for work, education, or safety has created Serbian communities across Europe, North America, and beyond. This raises an interesting question about what happens to genetic identity when people move far from their homeland. Genetically, the answer is simple. Migration does not erase ancestry. Serbian diaspora communities still carry the same deep genetic layers as those who remain in the Balkans. Over time, new mixtures will form, as they always have, but the older foundations do not disappear. What often changes more quickly is cultural expression. Language, customs, and traditions can shift within a few generations, especially in multicultural environments. Yet DNA continues to reflect older histories long after daily life has changed. This highlights an important truth. Genetics is not about purity or preservation. It is about memory. Serbian DNA carries the memory of ancient Balkan populations, Slavic migrations, imperial eras, and modern movement. It tells a story of continuity through change, both at home and abroad. In this way, the Serbian diaspora is not separate from the Serbian genetic story. It is simply the latest chapter in a long history of movement and adaptation. The history of Serbia itself, from ancient Balkan communities and Roman rule to Slavic migrations and medieval kingdoms, has left its mark on the Serbian genetic story. Every chapter added a new layer, shaping the DNA we see today. If you have enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of Serbia, let us know in the comments. Have you ever taken a DNA test and discovered something unexpected about your roots? Or have you always wondered where your family's story truly begins? Share your thoughts. We would love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and goodbye for now.